So how would I start in weapon training? Dang, straight to the question. You didn't even say hi. Hi, DJ. Hi, Zach. It's nice to see you. But for real, how do I start weapon training? <laughs> you would learn to be cool. How cute. <sighs> She's so helpful. What weapon should I start with as a beginner? Just, just answer the question. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done. That's actually a good question. And uh, how about I give you my top five? What's up guys, it's the old ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat and welcome to the modern ninja and I post a lot of videos throughout the week on various platforms. In fact, many of you may only know about my YouTube because of somewhere like TikTok. So many that means that many of you have seen and followed me maybe because a lot of my weapon videos. And as such, there's a lot of people always asking how they can get into weapon tricks themselves or honestly just weapon work in general it can be traditional too just how to get into weapon martial arts and to be more specific a lot of people ask me the question zach asked me just a second ago what are the best weapons for beginners and so it's time to answer that question here are my top five weapons for beginners now just so you know this list is going to be in order of when a martial arts practitioner should train with this weapon in my opinion because many weapons need a skill set that a previous weapon would allow the practitioner to learn a lot more easily and a lot more quickly now does that mean you can't go out of order yeah you can go out of order if you really want to but i personally suggest you learn them in the order that i'm saying because that's just how i do it with my students so just taking a moment with editing DJ, yes, literally editing the video right now. Um, if you actually wanted to be a student of mine, you can also do that too. So just let me know by shooting me a message on Instagram or even here if you really want to. So uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. And of course, if you want any of these weapons, check out the links down below because I'll have them all linked down there for you guys. Number one is the bow staff. First off, let's get this out of the way. Bow staff is what most people know it as. However, bow does in fact mean staff. You don't need to tell me in the comments, I know. So if you just call it a bow or if you just call it a staff, that also works. But the bow staff is a great weapon to start out with for several reasons. Most notably, the relative safety of the weapon. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have any blades naturally, and it has the ability to transfer many of its skills to other weapons and aspects of martial arts. And because usually it lacks any blades, any sharp points, or a chain, this weapon is fairly forgiving for any mistakes. Now the way a staff works, it allows you to use both hands to keep full control of your weapon until a more advanced techniques later down the line in your martial arts career. And like I said earlier, it's first because you can transfer those skills, and some of them are pretty straightforward. The Joe or spear or even a trisectional staff is a pretty obvious evolution of the bow staff. However, the skills you learn with a bow can transfer to more unexpected weapons like the Eskrima Sticks or most types of swords, in fact. And with the mention of Eskrima Sticks, let's get into number two, the Eskrima. This is the first time students are going to use both hands separately with each other. Obviously, you can use just one, but I've always taught my students with two. This allows people to gain the skills necessary to use both hands independently from one another and keep them flowing together. This helps teach timing, body awareness, and allows the student to become ambidextrous, a trait that is basically necessary for very high level martial arts techniques. And like I said, for these skills are directly transferable to weapons and skills that you'll need later on in your martial arts career. Like these weapons can be transferred to swords or commas or size or even double staff if that's what you want to do. Number three, the devil's weapons, nunchucks. I'm sure longtime fans of this channel know how I feel about nunchucks. They are the devil's weapons and they want nothing more than to hurt you every time you train with them. But that does not mean it is not an excellent thing to learn. Like I talked about in my weapons explaining video, the original purpose of this tool was for training hand-eye coordination. And it's excellent at teaching that, like it's great at doing that. Now as far as direct weapons that they transfer to that aren't the staff or Eskrima, there's not a ton of super popular ones, but the trisectional staff and chain whip are some of the most notable ones that you'll be able to take those techniques and move to the next level 
uh, in your training. But of course, if you're using nunchucks, be careful. I suggest not using something like metal or wooden nunchucks when you're just getting started. There are some great foam chucks out there that you can get, and I suggest starting out with a rope, and then once you get good at rope nunchucks, then migrating to chain later on, but that's just my personal suggestion. Like I said, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You don't really have to listen to me at all if you don't really want to. And number four is the sword. Of course, the sword had to be on this list. It's a staple of so many different martial arts. And it's one of the most iconic weapons, like martial weapons out there. So my suggestion personally would be starting with a single katana and moving on to other types of swords or double swords from there. Why do I suggest that? Because that is exactly what I did in my training career. So um, that's, you know, what I teach. But honestly, the type of sword you choose doesn't really matter. If you want to use a broad sword or a, a uh, straight sword or whatever, you can do that and you should be pretty fine as long as you choose a single sword to try and, before trying to migrate to double sword or a uh, triple sword. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working on making a triple sword combination. It's coming along. It's going to happen. Just be patient. And number five is the HBO special, where you help a brother out and drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. But in all actuality, number five is Shuriken. Last on this list, and it's the only ranged weapon on this list. Now, there are many types of throwing weapons that someone could choose from, including axes, throwing knives, spears, even commas and sides can be throwing weapons. But the throwing star is a fairly easy weapon to just get started with and actually stick to your target. And being easy to stick means that the practitioner can focus on training their targeting skills and throwing form. And after getting comfortable with that weapon, they can begin migrating to knives and other weapons that allows the user who is already comfortable with their targeting to be, you know, to try something more difficult at throwing, something like an ax. Axes are notoriously difficult for beginners. But like I said, all of these weapons and some of the extra weapons I mentioned on the side are linked down in the video below. So if you wanna get them, that's, that's where you get them. But guys, thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. And until next time, my name's DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. And if you like this video, check out this video that I just posted or this one that YouTube thinks you will really enjoy. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next